Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. My name is Arshi, and we're here to talk about Throne and Liberty and one of the many weapons you can choose from. And in today's video, it's all about the Greatsword. If you're thinking about playing Throne and Liberty, the Greatsword is going to be a weapon you want to pay attention to. Let's go dive right in. The Greatsword is an incredible 1v1 specialist. Its ranking recently went up with the new specialization skills added and offers a new AoE stun. Here we're looking to do Devastating Smash, which is a long distance AoE stun, into Death Blow, Ascending Slash, and then Guillotine Blade. This is another clip showing you with Icebox, just locking them down with not only having one knockdown skill, having the ability to root them twice, having the ability to basically stun them twice. This weapon is an incredible 1v1 specialist. But sadly, the Greatsword alone falls short on its follow-up as an AoE damage dealing weapon. Instead, you will want to take advantage of an offhand weapon, which can combo into the AoE stun, such as with the SNS class with this AoE chain pull or the crossbow spin to win skills. When you decide to play TNL and see a Greatsword near you, just accept your fate if they get a stun off on you, as you'll be perma stun, CC'd, kicked on the floor, teabagged, and while all this is happening, might as well start playing Ariana Grande's Thank You Next soundbite, since the TTK in this game is relatively short, if not instant. Thank you. Let's break down this video into many parts, such as a tier list when paired with other weapons so you know exactly what to expect in every setting, stats breakdown, best and slot weapon, what armor sets and jewelry to take advantage of, active and passive skills breakdown, and how to combo PVX and more. Also, don't forget to check out our description for timestamps to revisit this video for your viewing pleasure. Let's start off by showing off each weapon's pairings with the greatsword starting from S tier to F tier, including both PvP and PvE. A greatsword paired with a sword and shield is an S tier weapon combo for small scale fights for PvP, since it has the ability to soak up damage from multiple sources and instantly dish out damage within seconds to 100 0 any champion outside of a sword and shield. A greatsword paired with a dagger is also similar to an SNS for its speed in killing a single target, but also plays a little differently since it's squishier. Think of yourself as an assassin and be patient. Try to not to be the main focus of your enemies since you can also die instantly if a staff bow or expo sees you before you can get the jump on them. Greatsword paired with a crossbow is a new combo that I recently saw in the latest patch, and you'll get a chance to see that soon in the new upcoming North American launch. The Greatsword now can jump 12 meters doing an AoE stun within 3 meter radius for 2.5 seconds, allowing you to take advantage of the Greatsword's skill damage bonus passives, the stun heavy attack, and critical passives including to instantly remove anything within 6 meters when you spin to win with Annihilation Barrage shot from the crossbow. The Greatsword in PvE has two active skills that can be increasing the attack speed and attack boost for six of your party members, which makes them super viable in PvE to help your crossbows instantly destroy any boss. But with the recent changes nerfing crossbow to allow other classes to become more viable against bosses, the Greatsword is still not the strongest PvE weapon since it has limited AoE capacities and, if there was a DPS meter, the Greatsword would fall short in comparison to the crossbow, bow, staff, etc. When it comes to Zerg based PvP, there is so much AoE in the game now thanks to the new skill specializations that the Greatsword paired with any weapon just fairly doesn't do well when it comes to numbers. The best thing you can do for your team is to listen to your shot color, charge in when the call is being made, and AoE stun the clump. Gaia Crush with the target or Annihilation Barrage and get out as soon as possible and hope you haven't died yet while you soak up damage running away to allow your backline DPS to do their job and that's why it's ranked between C to A tier when used with different weapons. Now let's dive into stats for both PvE and PvP. Throne of Liberty is fairly different when it comes to your average MMO game. Strength, Dex, Wisdom, and Perception are all stats that can increase your damage, meaning Strength isn't only for Swords, Dex only for Bows, Wisdom for Magic, and Perception God knows what that was in other MMOs. You can mouse over each stat question mark to see exactly what they offer and how to take advantage of them in all the scenarios, but hey, don't worry, I got you covered, just follow the steps below for both PvE and PvP and you'll do just fine if you want to min-max with me. Let's talk about PvE first, since you'll be killing monsters the majority of the time in this game to get your character stronger in PvP. In PvE, your stats will be fairly simple. You must have 50 strength for the heavy attack milestone and all decks to help increase your critical hit rate. You only need 30 perception for the milestone hit accuracy bonus passive, or less if you do not need to worry about your hit rate, as bosses relatively don't have high evasion. If you're noticing that you're missing the boss slash monster, then increase your perception and or add the skill passive to increase your hit rate. In PvP, the stats are flipped. You'll want to focus on Perception being at 60 in the beginning of the game, where everyone's mixed traits and equipment at blue gear will have a ton of melee evasion. But over time, as you get closer to your endgame purple tier 1 and tier 2, you can lower that Perception to 40 at the lowest. The reason for this is because Greatsword gains a ton of hit slash accuracy passive bonuses thanks to your max HP gain, while other classes don't have enough melee evasion perks and traits or in their gear or in their skills to compensate for this. 
So in turn, you'll be increasing your strength or deck stats to improve your invasion thanks to the new deck stat milestone being at 70, giving you 120 evasion or 70 strength for 200 more defense and health. Greatsword Dagger is all about evasion, except for melee, thanks to your passive ability Shadow Walker, which gives you 690 magic and range evasion, which can easily hit over 2000 plus evasion in the range slash magic category. Greatsword Sword and Shield is ideally the opposite of a Greatsword Dagger. You want all the attention. You want to stand out as a definition of a frontline tanky DPS. And the traits that you want to focus on here are HP and Endurance, since you have so many defensive passes thanks to your Sword and Shield and your damage bonuses thanks to the Greatsword, making you not only a super tank, but also a real threat to anyone caught in your chain pull slash stuns, since you could pretty much destroy any squishy target in a 1v1 matchup with the Greatsword alone, regardless of your second weapon of choice. Let's dive deeper in these two traits to understand them a bit better, so you don't think about having every single trait in your gear, but mainly focus on one trait or the other. Now let's talk about how hit and evasion works together. If you have equal or less evasion than the enemy's hit, you will be evading 0% of the time. If you have 500 or more evasion than the enemy's hit, you will be evading 33% of the time. Here comes the diminishing returns now. If you have 1000 or more evasion hit, you're now making a 50% evasion chance you'll be evading 50% of all attacks, including CCs. Now this is huge diminishing returns. If you have 2,000 or more evasion than the enemy's hit, you are now sitting at 66% evasion chance. And thus, it's really worth going down this route if you have the right class combos for evasion. If you're running daggers, you need to take advantage of evasion, since literally holding onto daggers gives you Master of Evasion under the Weapon Mastery for 105 evasion and Shadow Walker for 690 evasion. Well, Endurance has always been useful, as it's always been subtracted, no matter how much crit the enemy has, it's not true for hit slash evasion. Again, if the enemy has more hit than your evasion, you will never evade their attacks. I also want to give a special thank you over to Eli's YouTube TL Hidden and Stats Formulas, where I got the breakdown on how all the stats work. If you want to learn more, check out the link in the description below. Now onto gear, we'll be focusing strictly on the Greatsword Dagger from the beginning of the game to the end game. Since you will be starting Throne of Liberty, you are capped by the service progression system. Also, let me know in the comments if you want to see me make a gear breakdown list for other weapon combos. Let's start off by saying that I'm not a sponsor for this website, only sharing it because it is just that good. Questlog.gg's Throne and Liberty Character Builder will help you min-max your build so you can feel confident that you are building your character accordingly and not throwing, and picking up some random gear that you'll regret later down the line. This website literally gives you the ability to check out every gear set that you'd want to create. Also calculates the stats, including the gear traits, skill passes, rune combos, resonance effects, stats, masteries, and more. If there's any Korean text on the page, also you can take advantage of under Chrome browser where you can auto translate the entire page into English, which is amazing. You're gonna notice that there's gonna be some traits that will have max health over hit, and here's why. Max hit will basically net you a 12 hit increase thanks to vital force passive and the greatsword tree versus 80 hit with no HP gain. Sadly, towards the end game, no one should be taking melee evasion seriously. So why spec heavily into hit when you already are landing all your attacks? Instead, increase your survivability and damage and get a small boost towards hit thanks to your stats into HP. If you had to pick between critical hit and attack speed, since you're gonna be having 70 decks, you would basically lean towards attack speed and heavy attack is always a priority on your weapons. All right, we built you literally six different builds to take advantage of from the beginning that you will notice it all the way to the very end end game, including the brand new patch that gives you the tier three dimensional rifts and all those armor pieces that are included with some arch bosses, which are pretty damn rare to get. But this is not 100% min max on the end 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 game because it's so goddamn rare for you to even obtain any of this stuff. So if you do get lucky on a different piece, you need to basically change this. Other than that, this is what you will fairly stick to. This will have an incredible amount of melee evasion, which I said that there is no melee evasion in the end game, but in the pre-game, there's a ton of it. And so you're gonna need hit on these two weapons very, very badly if you want to hit anyone, since everyone's gonna be having melee evasion on all these uncommon pieces. And it's gonna be tough for you to basically tackle them since this is gonna be coming in from the main story quest. You will get all of these from the main story quest, including the purple piece, including one weapon blue, and including this ring. So every one of these pieces are literally main story quests and lithograph. Lithograph is going to be this one specific piece, which is elite resistance knife. Where you can craft four different green weapons and you pick up this blue weapon. And so let's go ahead and talk about the next pieces here. Going into the actual tier one rares, you'll be taking advantage of Laquarius, Thorny Edge, and Magma Dudes if they ever do drop for you. It is a rare item for these two pieces. 
So don't basically take it too personal if you don't basically get them right off the rip. These are still very viable. They're still very strong and they still can be a pack. They can still pack a punch. Slowly but surely, you will start getting some purple tier one weapons and armor pieces as you still doing dungeons and other things like that. This is a 100% drop rate if you do all the tier one dungeons and get 20 of those tokens each. And so this just takes time to obtain. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the next pieces of armor. As you're going deeper into the series, you'll start noticing you have range evasion and magic evasion, and you might get lucky with the abyss tier two dungeon drops, or you get lucky and you can drop the wraith. Typically, you're going to be sticking to the same exact positions for Dawn gloves and pants. Don't basically just do on the chest piece if Dawn shows up here, if Dawn shows up here. The reason why we put it on the gloves and the pants are specific. So read them. They're on the website. You can ask me questions in the comments if you basically have a different version of this. Other than that, these are all the actual movesets. We didn't put any reconnaissance effects that only exist. A reconnaissance effect only exists if you max out the traits. If you have all of these three maxed out, you can now basically roll in reconnaissance effect, which has percentages attached to them, which is incredible if you do land on things like heavy attack chance on the weapon. Uh, and then you've got, of course, got the end end game, which is your ruin design here, which will be ruin synergies, where you can basically see here if you do somehow get strength plus three, and also basically with critical damage reduction done to you, or you got three decks with 3% attack speed increase, those are one of the best most sought after designs here and if you go to the ever pieces over here for the rune sets up from these energies here you'll see synergies also are at max health typically you take the max health ones at all times which is plus two decks and max health and you just continue to escape that concept you'll just keep getting that max health and attack speed across the board since that is going to be giving you higher survivability and it works so well with your great sword since it has an incredible passive that we're going to now talk about skills and that incredible passive is called Vital Force, which means the more health you got every 100 points, it gives you 2.2.02 hit rate, gives you skill damage boost, and it gives you stun chance. So don't forget, max health is so good for Breski Great Sword users, including with daggers and swords on top, uh, great, uh, sword and shield on top of the Great Sword. So this is the PvP side. These are all the skills you want to look at. Block Blade, incredible mana recovery moveset. You want to take advantage of this in PvE and in PvP. If you iframe while moving and somebody tries to land a stun on you or a root on you, you will then basically be able to iframe that moveset and go invisible and become untargetable and get your mana regen up. And so it's really, really strong. Block Blade is a great PvP, Zerg build, PvE, and overall a skill you want to focus on. This is great for 1v1s. This is great for arenas because you get to stun the target who's coming at you, stand still, stun the target, and then you can continue comboing them. If you do an iframe, that also causes them to try to root you and you iframe it. You also can turn it into a dash move set, which is basically your precision dash. But traditionally, you won't be using this only for specific scenarios. All the time, you will be leaning on block blade. We're gonna go over a quick brief uh, overview of all the active and passive skills. Feel free to basically just copy exactly what you see down here to make your own PVP tab and all of the specializations attached to it. You'll be able to see the PVE tab that we have here and all of the specializations as well attached to it. Feel free to pause the video or check the link in the description down below if you want to have exactly what we have and you can check every detail on the website if you don't want to basically have to do it in-game. Other than that, here are the masteries to take advantage of and the greatsword masteries. But let's talk about combos and why they're so strong. And the, um, the talking about these combos will help you understand why we chose these specializations. Moving into the combo list, we want to start with Precision Dash. If Precision Dash is basically up, you may basically start with Precision Dash. If the basically Shadow Strike is up and there's a Zerg group, you do not want to just Shadow Strike into a clump and then die. You Shadow Strike when you know that there's an opportunity for you to secure a kill. You hit the target with Shadow Strike. It has a 40% range increase and you can teleport right back. So you go Shadow Strike into Stunning Blow into Guy's Crush and then you teleport back with Shadow Strike. You don't have much time and you're going to be practicing this over and over again if you have Chief's Executioner Earthquake Blade. If you don't have it, then you're going to have to change some specs around here. You're going to be having to take Gaia's Crush Frost Cleaving, since you do not have that actual original Gaia's Crush weapon, which will do four attacks in a single location and a damage boost of 30% increase. This is God tier. And if you don't have it, don't fret. You still can actually do a lot of damage, and you still can be a devastating threat. You'll be taking off basically one of these movesets, which basically reduces the shield uh, block rate by 30% and go straight into Gaius Crush and call it a day. And it's literally the same thing. Just don't target tank tanks because you're going to have a hard time killing them. But other than that, uh, this is basically how you would do it. Uh, other than that, if you don't basically have this capacity, you can always switch off this actual CC moveset on Camouflage Cloak and move it up here if you still want to target tanks. But remember, if you're getting slept, 
or if you're getting stunned or rooted while you went invisible at the same time and you're getting frustrated, you might want to take this immune to CC moveset. And those are just some of the ways you can actually adjust this entire set here. Now, how does this all actually combine together? So if I go into precision dash into ascending slash, since this is a prone, a, a rooted target, I can now basically prone them. And because I've done precision dash, that gives me 160 more heavy attack. I have a chance to increase the prone duration by one more second, which I've already got the prone increase by one more second, which then will increase it total time to 4.5 seconds laying on the floor, which is incredible, which I can go into guillotine blade. I can hit them with cleaving moonlight and then finish them off with brutal incision because I know for a fact they're below 50% health and I'll get that additional critical damage of 20% and a 600% crit hit, which is automatically going to crit. It's very high likely it's going to crit. And then that's one move set. The second combo that you can take advantage of is Shadow Strike into Stunning Blow into Gaius Crash. The Stunning Blow is going to give you that 150% more damage than the next hit. And you will notice that you'll get that heavy attack chance as well as that critical chance towards Gaius Crush, which will melt them 100 to 0. And then you can basically finish them off with Death Blow if they're still not dead. As well as... You can also basically go back into a devastating smash if the person chooses to basically somehow get out of that stun you can go right into a teleport stun onto them since they have used their actual purification stone so de devastating smash is a move set that you traditionally want to use after these two are down and you can use this into actual guys crush when the shot caller calls it but these are for single target basically move sets that you were taking advantage of you go guys crush you go devastating smash into guys crush on an aoe move set and that's basically it. And you just basically go back and you keep doing this over and over again and rinse and repeat. And then uh, as far as basically how these passes work for each other, you'll see that once you get the kill, you get 37% more movement speed every single time you use Cleaving Moon or you use Ascending Slash or you use basically Precision Dash or Shadow Strike. You will notice also also with Devastating Smash, you automatically gain 38% more movement speed. You automatically gain the 690 evasion and 14 damage reduction. And you automatically gain this Laquarius Thorny Edge's bonus of 50 flat damage on a mobility skill. It is insane. So that's basically something you want to pay, pay attention to. Then if you look at the, basically the passives, you want to go for Master of Evasion first. And then you max out Maddening Excitement. Then you do the same thing for the Greatsword side. You want to do Complete Stun, the 0.5 duration increase. Then you want to go for the final melee attack chance increase by 100. A lot of people will say, I want this first. I'm telling you, you're going to regret it because this 0.5 second duration is going to be able to support you since everyone's taking debuff duration minus six. That means your stun duration is going to get shorter. You need that 0.5 seconds to offset everyone's debuff duration that they're actually adding to their actual armor pieces, which is going to affect you. Other than that, uh, that's going to be for the PvP side. Now talking about the PvE side, for bosses, it's all listed here. You'll be able to see that you'll be able to take advantage of this moveset. You're wondering, why am I bringing stun for the boss? If you can't stun it, you shock it. For 9.4 seconds, you gained 288 heavy attack and critical hit of 105. So that means as soon as the boss didn't get stunned, they have a shock effect on them, which allows you to do your Gaia's Crush, allows you to basically take advantage of Death Blow. Where there's a new passive attachment to it. It says right there, 80% more damage to bosses. It has another new set on Valiant Brawl, additional 100 damage per uh, attack on a boss so valiant brawl also gets 100 more damage and you, of course you've got guillotine's blade that does more damage to bosses by 100 so they've increased all these little passives here because they nerfed great crossbow and they increased it for all skills across the board for all weapons and you'll see here it doesn't have any boss increase but this does so much damage and it has this effect accumulation which is called uh thunder clouds and we want thunder clouds to get to 20 stacks and the reason for this is you take advantage of the murderous energy which extends this basically thunderclouds to basically from six seconds to about eight seconds and you can cast this skill every five seconds thanks to your cooldowns so you'll use this and then you'll use it again and you'll go into a 20 stacks movement movement set which will reduce the cooldown of brutal incision by 50 percent and then at the same time this skill right here is basically going to be increased based on proportionate of the boss and as well as you'll do 400 on the flat hit after three seconds it will pop and it will do 40% per stack up to 20 stacks. So this skill now does 1,200 damage on bosses if they have 20 stacks of, um, of Thundercloud stacks. So you don't really need to basically bring in Effective Venom, which will basically give you the Thundercloud on it uh, and just spam the crap out of Cleaving Moon that comes with Murderous Energy. And you'll just basically get those stacks naturally and then pop them. You'll notice that you'll be having this incredible moveset for your teammates that will extend it by three more seconds, making it where everybody gets 15% more attack speed for three more seconds. 
as well as 50 for 50 flat damage increase for nine seconds with this effect duration and all of your teammates within 15 meters will get that 50 flat damage increase you'll also take advantage of the effect duration by 50 percent longer so instead of three seconds it's now 4.5 seconds whenever you do precision dash and this is an aoe around you that will reduce the targets basically defense by 720 which is incredible um if if you have any other questions as far as why i did this in my pve build uh let me know in the comments down below again and then this is some crazy aoe move sets uh let me know in the comments after you read through this if there's anyone that's smart enough to figure out what i did here this is a weak ass aoe build compared to bow slash staff slash crossbow but it's a fun one if you haven't tried it all right this is basically a little secret little sauce for you guys to check out and uh hey i hope you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next or check out my other videos that we're posting here shortly on our youtube channel and also don't forget to like and subscribe and follow that would mean a lot to me as a small creator. And again, I'll see you guys next time on the next episode here on YouTube or live on Twitch.